Let me share with you, will you? Anybody seen The Walking Dead, a show of zombies in your lifetime? And they walk around brainless, mindless. Well, in 2010, I'm sharing with y'all. I'm being transparent because somebody needs this. Somebody's in a tough time in their life. And, and I'm sharing it. Um, I had just had my health challenge. Y'all know I had just gotten through my kidney transplant, Nita, in 2010. And Nita and my mama, she said, baby, I know that's your wife, but I just got to come see my baby every day. You know, and we got through that. And Nikki got through that even though they said, well, you didn't sign up for that. We're too young. You don't have to stay there. But God had it that she stayed there and she took care of me. She stayed there with me. But I'm sorry, Nikki, somebody needs this. But we didn't know a little later, Reverend Hall, Sister Hall, in 2011, that God was going to strike her down. And you heard me say the bacteria meningitis, but let me tell you about what happened so you know the details and that you know Melanie good to see just, just that we got to trust God. Melanie, you got to trust him. You got to trust them. I know what it looks like. Nobody has to go through this, but we serve a God who's able. We serve a God who's able. There's nothing happens here that he don't know about, that he didn't ordain, so he won't give you the strength to go to. Let me tell you, in 2011, I talked about that zombie. I woke up in the middle of the night. Nikki had gotten back from California, and she's walking around mindless. And you're wondering what's going on. She's mindless. She's going around, Miss Eva. She's burning her hand on the stove and sitting on the stove and doing things in the middle of the night because she doesn't know where she is. I just know what God can do. She's walking around mindless. She couldn't talk. She couldn't respond, Miss Vivian. She's just walking around the house, walking around the house. And I say, what's wrong? After I found out what's on, I called her mother, Tina, I called her mama, and I said, Mom, Miss Glenda, we need you to come check on Nikki because she's in a bad way. And she came over to the house, and we got her. And uh, I had messed up already. I should have had it taken, but I wanted to wait for her mother. That's my baby, but that's her baby, too. And we got there, we went to, some of y'all, do y'all know the emergency center, Mike, on 288? We went there. That's the first place we went because I figured we can get in and get past everything. And we went there, and it wasn't too far from where we were. And we went in there, and we sat down. And I remember talking to my daddy. He said, are you going to trust God? Because my daddy was in the hospital himself. Tess was in the hospital. Our family was going through it at the time. And I talked to Kenny, too, I think, but he said, are you going to trust? This is a good chance. Well, God said, Monica, we talked the other day. God said, have you considered my servant Job? It's a blessing for him to consider you. I think it was the mayor said he gave his toughest soldiers his toughest battles. And he knew what he had for me in the future, so he gave me that journey. And I got to that hospital, and they came in. And they were like aghast. They were like, what is going on here? Nobody knew what was going on with her. She was just walking around. Stephanie, they had to tie her down because she couldn't stop walking around. And they finally put her in the room and they tied her down. She wasn't screaming or anything because she couldn't do anything. She couldn't say anything but just exist. That's all she can do. So I sat down with her family and I prayed. I said, this is what we are going to do. I'm going to trust God. And this is what we're going to do. And I thank God because they said, we watched the way you did that. But it gave God the glory. I know it's a little long, but somebody needs to hear this. Just, we called the medical center downtown, and they said, we don't have any beds. And we found out that they could take her in Baytown. In Baytown. Somebody said, you better not take that baby to that place. We don't know. Nobody talks about that place. But yet and still, I said, Lord, I'm going to trust you. Let me tell you, sometimes also, you're going to have, Brother Bless, or you're going to have some naysayers. One of the doctors, Nat, Reverend Goins, came and said, let that baby go so she won't suffer. Let her go so she won't suffer. She's not going to make it. Let her, let her go. And I just, 
God didn't tell me let her go. I thank God for a praying mother and a praying father who didn't say let her go. You're going to have naysayers if you're fulfilling God's plan. And I took her there to that hospital. And I remember them saying, people telling me, man, you're going to lose that girl. That's a chop shop. I know I'm laughing, but that's what they said. Here's a chop shop. They're going to butcher that baby. She's not going to make it. Even one of the doctors said, why did you bring her here? Go ahead and, Stephanie, you remember they said, go ahead and get the doctors, the chaplain. We're going to read her her last rites. Man, what if you listen to what the world says and you don't listen to what God says? We're reading her last rites. James, her head was to the left because her brain was filled with the mucus. She was in so much pain that they had to put her in a coma. They said she's expiring tonight. But God. But God. They told me she was going to pass that night. But she said it. And then the naysayers, yeah, she made it through the night, but I don't know about the next day. Then Brother Nunn, she made it in another day. Guess what? Don't get your hopes up too high. Then she made it another night, Charles. Then, well, these things happened, and then she passed away in a week. And sometimes, like in my life now, can't you accidentally say something good? Positive? By accident? Bear with me, y'all. They don't. They told me she's going to die. She never did. It. And I stopped listening to that person. Then they told me she's going to be a vegetable forever. She's going to be a vegetable. It's going to be tough. And one guy even told me, we're going to sit down with you and show you how you navigate when you have a wife as far as in uh, vegetable dating and how do you handle this and all that. I mean, they're bringing me this negative stuff, you know. They say she is going to be a vegetable. And then I come in there one day because, man, and let me tell you how good God is. This is a byproduct of this. I, my daddy in the hospital, so I had to go see him, Brother Blanche, and my mama was out of town, so I had to go all the way from Baytown to pick Peyton up from my mama's house, take her to school and come back. And many times I fell asleep, but God made old death behave. You see what he's doing? He's just giving me these testimonies. But one of you can't get strong without anything on your back. So I came back one day. They said she's going to be a vegetable. Kev, I looked up, man. I came in there. She woke up. They said she wouldn't talk or anything. She was like, I think I want some gumbo. <laughs> but yet and still, you told me she's going to be a vegetable. <laughs> Jaylene, they don't have the last word. And then the same brother looked like he was trying to one-up me. Because then he said that she probably, she's going to need, re uh, he said that she probably won't be able to walk again. We need to see if we can do any kind of rehab, because she won't be able to do it. She's too tra traumatic. Next thing I know, I come back from that morning. God made death behave. And they say, Mr. Booker, we need your help. We can't get your wife to sit down. I said, so now! What the devil meant for bad, bringing all this negative stuff in here. I don't care what somebody says about you or what you're going to go through or what you have. God will change it around. He'll change it around and he'll make it for your good. And you'll be stronger Because you went through it. You can't have that weak faith. Expecting God to do something for you, but you don't want to do nothing. You don't want to trust him. You got to realize, as he said, he's the only reason I'm here right now. I didn't do nothing. And when you know somebody's been there for you all the time, Brother Pierre, you know what they're doing. He's the same God yesterday, today, 
And when we get out the scene, he'll be here forevermore. Telling me she's going to be a vessel. But Nikki, stand up. Stand up. Told me she was going to die. She lost some left hearing in her left ear, but she's still here. She's still here. She's still here. That ain't no ghost. They gave up on a man to give up on you. But God won't give up on you. Hallelujah. She went to school, got the degree, and got a master's, and looking forward to move ahead. That don't sound like no ghost to me. But you got to trust him. Let me tell you something. The problem is, Damon, we're waiting for a great, great testimony where he did this. He came out of the sky. But Damon, this next step I take, God did that. My brother couldn't walk up here. He couldn't do it. But little Ronnie, he left you here, man. And he's keeping you right now. Remember that. You hear me, son? God will do it for you. Man can't do nothing. That's why I say we're going to love people here. Because who changed your life? It was God. There no man in here. No Pharisee. Nobody changed your life. It was God. That's why we're going to love each other. God will take care of you. But as I close, let me say, just trust him. Just trust him. I don't care what the naysayers say. Because guess what? He's a, not a baby anymore. He can hear you. He can come see about you. He'll climb his ear. Let me tell you, folks are going to turn you down. But trust him. Folks are going to call you everything but a child of God. So I trust him. People are going to tell you what you can't do. But you trust him. You're not putting your faith in man or yourself. You're putting your faith in somebody that's greater than